queens divas of a more mature age welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me let's jump right into this beautiful fernanda blazer with this beautiful wool blend well it's a wool poly blend fabric from cali fabrics so i have already cut out and prepped all of my pieces they've all been marked and everything prior to i encourage you to do the same thing I like to start out with my darts so you will see here I'm showing you that I have stayed my edges which is going to keep things from stretching out while I'm constantly handling this fabric but we're going to start with the dart on the front side because we have to close that up in order to add our pockets so you will often see me hand sewing before I machine sew this is called basting and the only thing this really does is just keep you from going to your machine with a ton of pins i try to avoid sewing over pins by any means necessary i encourage you to do the same thing not only that basting is much better than pinning because it really does keep the fabric in place you don't have to worry about things shifting around when you baste stitch so take the extra time to do that extra step now here you want to start from the widest part of your dart and sew to the narrow part of your dart and we're just going to glide right off the end where our dart ends at we're not going to use our machine cutter because we're going to tie that end of the dart into a knot and then we'll cut our thread Now we'll remove our basting stitches because you always want to remove those. Sometimes you'll see me remove them in places like this. Other times they may stay in the garment. Now the most important part of the dart is, in my opinion, is pressing the dart the correct way and also balancing it. So here you're going to see me I'm cutting all the way to the tip of the dart. I'm going to cut as far as I can go. When I can't cut anymore, then I'm going to create a little split there just so that those two areas can separate. The tip that I wasn't able to cut open because it's so teeny tiny, I actually sew that toward, or excuse me, I press that towards the fullest side of the body. So to the chest area, basically. Now right here where your pocket is going to go, you will see that I'm gonna cut a split right there at the end of my dart, just so that I can separate those two pieces of fabric and press that dart open. Now the iron that I'm using, I use a Rowenta Steam Pro, I believe. I'll link it in the description box. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Oh my goodness. I just bought this. Um, well, I got it around Christmas time, but it actually sits on a base and you can fill it up with water and the water typically lasts all day long. It's amazing. Now, when I'm pressing on the back side of the fabric, I don't press the tip of my dart. I wait to press the tip until I flip it over to flatten everything out on the front I found that that keeps me from having a dimple there. Always, always, as much as you can, use your pressing cloth because that's going to keep you from damaging your fabric. It's going to keep you from getting that like burnt look on your fabric. Perfect, right? It almost couldn't get any better than that in my mind <laughs> all right so now before we can sew any pockets on we've got to close that split up on the side working with fernanda was my first time ever working with this and so it took me a while to get this down pat i took this to my machine and you're going to run a zigzag stitch just right over that split and when you run a zigzag stitch over that split it's going to close it all up for you 
And so then you would be able to place your welt pocket down. Now we're gonna attach our front side panel because Fernanda has a side panel, a front side panel and a back side panel. Again, you'll see me pinning the side panel on there. And after I have pinned it on there, I'm going to baste it in place. When I first learned how to do this, I thought this is the most redundant thing. But the truth of it is, honestly, like when you go to your machine, you can just sew. Like you don't have to keep stopping to pull out pins. I have, I broke several needles running over pins. Some people religiously sew over pins. It, it just doesn't really work that well for me. So only if I'm, if I'm using a fabric that I just have no choice, but to have pins in there, I'll do that. But typically I'm gonna baste everything in place. Now we're gonna stitch that and we're gonna pull our basting stitches out of there so that we can press. Sew a seam, press a seam. Now, another thing I've learned is that, that that's really not true. <laughs> you really don't have to run to your iron every single time you press, you sew a seam. What I say is don't sew any intersecting seams without pressing them first but you can absolutely sew all of your straight seams and then go to the iron and press them out. Now, this is called press as sewn. So that means that you're just gonna press the piece flat before you actually open it up to press the seam whichever way you like to press the seam. Most of the time, I'm gonna press my seams open. So I'm making some splits in you're gonna cut to your seam line and definitely not through it, but just so that those curves will lay nice and flat because Fernanda is snatched in her sides. Now, just for the purpose of TV, I'm using my little miniature teeny tiny ironing board um, be so that I don't have to keep moving the camera. Don't ever iron or steam or anything on your cutting mats because once they bubble up, they will never go back flat. I learned that from experience. I had to replace three cutting mats and as you know, cutting mats are not cheap. All right, so that little doohinky that you just saw me put under there was just so that when I press that side seam, the seam allowances don't show through to the other side. Now we're gonna add our upper welt pocket, which is one of my favorite pockets to sew. I don't know why. We're just gonna fold that in half. We're gonna take it to our machine and we're gonna run 3 8 of an inch seam down both sides, leaving the top open. Do not sew the top closed because we have to turn it right side out. All right, now here, I just like to clip that excess fabric off of there so I can make a clean turn. Always clip your threads, clip your threads, clip your threads. I don't even like to watch people sew who have threads hanging here, there, and everywhere. Just clip them off because you might forget and the garment might be complete and then you have threads hanging everywhere so you eventually have to go in and cut them off anyway. Now here's a little trick I learned from Kenneth D. King. And you're gonna take a needle and thread and stick it in that corner and just pull the corner out so that you get a nice point 
on the end of your collar. I like doing this so much better than constantly poking my point turner in there because you could poke through. Sometimes I have a habit of grabbing the scissors to try to get that little extra piece that's in there to push out. And this is a better way to do it. This is the best way to do it in my opinion. And there we have our upper welt. Now we're gonna press it flat and apply it to the front of the jacket. Now I'm showing you here that you wanna make sure that point when you lay it flat is pointing down so that when you flip it up after it's been sewn, the point should be pointing up towards your shoulder. I'm gonna pin that down, I will pin that. And you actually wanna make sure that the edge of that little welt is actually right on that center line because the line below there that you should have traced out is actually gonna be your stitching line. Now because I can't see my stitching line, I just like to take a piece of chalk and mark straight across the pocket piece where I'm gonna sew so that I don't make any mistakes. Now we've stitched that down. Now we're gonna add the facing piece, which is actually added the exact same way that that piece was added. We are just gonna place that. The edge of it goes right on that stitching line. And then I'm gonna mark my stitching line on my facing as well. This is the piece that you would see when your pocket is open. I'm pinning my welt piece out of the way so that I can sew my facing without anything getting in the way. We wanna make sure we have that exactly where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna make sure I have a straight stitching line, a guideline for myself. And that's just a chalk pencil that I'm using there. Gonna stick a pin or two in it, go to the machine and work it out. So I actually sew most of the time, I sew on the Singer C9920. I have a brother and I have a baby lock serger. I use the Singer most of the time. There are a lot of things I like about this machine, but there are also a lot of things that I don't like about this machine. I need to do a video on that. All right, so now that we've got all that out of the way, we're gonna press our welt pocket into position. I like to press them first so that I know they're gonna stay where I need them to stay. And then we'll cut our split open and we'll be on our merry way. Almost forgot that pressing cloth. All right, now I'm going to draw two little triangles, one on each end, and I'm gonna start 
right at where I ended my stitching line on both sides and that just gives me a guideline that just lets me know where I need to stop cutting I'm gonna cut a line straight down the middle and then I'm gonna cut a little triangle right down at the end. And I'm gonna make sure I go right to my stitching line and definitely not through it. And it's always better to not cut enough in the beginning than it is to cut too much. Because if you cut too much, you can't go back. But if you don't cut enough, you'll see that you didn't go far enough when you flip the pocket out because typically that's when you're gonna have a pucker. And so you would just flip it back over and just clip it. Typically, it's only like a teeny tiny bit more that you need to clip into there, but never, never go too far. And we're going to tuck it all to the back. We're going to tuck that to the back and the front flap or the welt pocket, we're actually going to press that up and then I will go to my machine off camera and I will stitch the sides of that thing down, get it all pressed. I, I think I added my pocket bag off camera and we're good to go there. Now we'll be working on our bottom welt pocket, AKA the double welt. Now, the line that we zigzag stitched closed is what I'm showing you here. And I'm showing you that I place that center line on my welt piece there. I place that right over my zigzag line where I closed up the blazer. Because that's where I'm going to be opening it up. And you want to be right on that line, right on that line. Now we're going to stitch our welt piece down. It is absolutely okay to only stitch the sides, like straight down this side and go straight down. I like to stitch a complete square because I feel like I, I just don't trust myself sometimes. <laughs> I feel like there's less room for error if I have a complete square. When I cut those triangles, it is just going to ensure that I'm not going to clip too far. So it's definitely personal preference. I think this is the reason why I say watch multiple people sew because most people have a preferred way of doing things and a lot of things there's no right way and there's no wrong way there there are so many ways that you can sew a welt pocket you just have to find the way that makes the most sense to you and is the easiest to you and that that comes out flawless now you'll see i'm going to my stitching line and not through it Now, one thing I will say that I learned very early on was that the biggest mistake I was making when doing welt pockets was not pressing the right way. And so the way that I'm going to show you that I'll press this has made all the difference. Another piece of advice that I would give you is if you can at all, I would try to almost never interface that welt piece unless you just have a fabric that 
that is necessary. So you'll see me press the welt down on the top, then I'm gonna press it up. This is a crucial step right here. This is before I even flip it to the back side. This is gonna ensure that you have a crispy turn. Now we're gonna push everything back to the back and get everything straightened out. And this is where you're gonna see if you're gonna have any puckers or not. Now I say don't interface that weld piece. Interface around the pocket opening where you're gonna cut, interface that. But sometimes when you interface that weld piece and then your, your um, self fabric is interfaced, that creates a lot of bulk which can sometimes make it difficult to get things to lay the way that they need to lay. So it's not 100% necessary to interface that welt piece. Now I'm gonna flip my welt up over the top piece that I cut open. And that, <laughs> you'll see me wearing my hand out here. <laughs> Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your hands out of the way whenever you can. Any burns, you, you, you see my hands. You see those nicks and burns on my hands. And I have one on my hand right now where I just backed my hand into the iron on accident. Safety first. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that everything stays in the position that I need it to stay in. And I will lay a clapper on top of it. And my thumb was still burning. And now when we flip it over, we're good to go. You see we have no puckers in the sides of it. Everything is laying flat like we need it to lay. Then we'll work on our flap piece and we will stitch that to our welts. Now, I don't, when I'm making a blazer for myself, I don't bag the pockets because I'm never gonna open them up and I'm never gonna put anything in them so I don't waste the fabric or the time. I just, I will add the flap, stitch it down, and I close everything up. If I'm making a blazer for someone else, I will add the pocket bags because I know some people like to put things in their pockets, but I'm not a fan. Only, I only want to be able to stick my hands in my pockets on a coat, an actual coat, a pair of pants, or a dress because I like to stick my hands in my pocket and twirl. Now, this is where we assembled our pocket flap. And you'll see me just trimming that down. And it's the same routine pretty much as the upper welt pocket. I'm gonna grade down the seam. And I, for the back side of my flap, I use the same fabric that I'm, you're gonna see me using for my lining, which you will see me install in part two. And then you wanna press that nice and flat. If you wanna top stitch that, it looks very nice when it's top stitched. I don't think I top stitched it here. Definitely personal preference. And then I'm gonna put a pin there because I'm gonna take that to the machine.
stitch it down across the top along the sides and then we're going to move on to the next step for me this is like this this can make or break the blazer and that is your lapels and your collar those are the two most important parts of the blazer imo third the sleeves <laughs> this is when it really starts to actually be a blazer so we're going to place the facing onto the lapel onto the bodice we're going to put them right sides together we're going to pin them and then what else are we going to do we're going to baste them into place before we take them to the machine to actually stitch them down Don't put pins in your mouth. <laughs> it's such a bad habit. Oh, it's a bad habit. All right, now before I take this, or before, actually before I base stitch this, I'm actually going to um, define my roll line I'm gonna tape the roll line here and since I'm trying to keep this as beginner friendly as I possibly can I'm gonna use an iron-on um, ribbon to tape my roll line when I do a blazer and I put a canvas and everything on the inside of it I always will hand stitch that tape down but this is just an iron-on seam face, a fusible seam, face, seam tape, rather, that you can just iron on there. And I like to, I just let it relax and be loose for about the first inch and a half. And then I kind of pull it a little bit snug as I go up to the top. We're gonna clip the excess off. I actually did a talk through on this video, but the if I would have left it like that, the video would have been like four hours long. And <laughs> I said, yeah, that's not a good idea. All right, so you see I have basted that um, interface, or not interfacing. I have basted the facing into place, the lapel facing. And now I'm just going to stitch it down. Now, after I stitch the facing down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to the roll line where the roll, where I want my roll to start. And there, there's a little indention there on Fernanda. I'm just going to clip in right to my seam line, just, just right to my stitches, not through them, but right to them. And that's going to help me with my understitching. Now, what I like to do is, okay, so I want to, this, this was really difficult for me. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to push your seam allowance towards your bodice until you get to that split that we created which you'll see me define it with a pin i'm going to mark a pin there so i know when i need to switch sides and then you're going to push the rest of the seam allowance to the facing which is the little piece that we've just sewn on there And then we're going to stitch about, I believe it's about one millimeter from the edge. So you'll see I'm actually starting from the bottom. So since I'm starting from the bottom, my seam allowance is pressed towards the facing. And you'll see I'm just stitching, right. I'm not stitching in the ditch. I'm stitching about a millimeter over from the ditch. I'm securing that seam allowance to that facing. And what that does is that just, 
ensures that everything stays turned in the direction that it needs to be turned in. And I just like to fill periodically just to make sure my seam is still facing in the direction that I need it to be facing in because sometimes it will flip over. Now, when I get to my pin, I'm just gonna pull the pin out. You don't have to take the needle up. You can just jump right over, but you're gonna make sure that now your seam allowances, your seams that are laying up underneath there need to be pressed in the other direction. They need to be facing the bodice now. And we're going to continue to stitch all the way up and we're gonna stop about, I like to stop about an inch and a half from the peak of the lapel. I stopped an inch and a half before the peak of the lapel because I kind of figured out that if I went all the way to the top when it was time for me to turn out my lapel, there was just extra bulk in there from where I had stitched that seam down. So now I like to stop just an inch and a half short so that I don't have all that excess stuff in there. All right, now I'm going to mark a line right in the gorge line, right in that little crease right there. You'll see me draw a line. And the reason why I'm going to draw a line there is because that's where I'm going to start sewing at 3 8 of an inch to close up the peak of the lapel, to close that area up. And you wanna start sewing right in that, right at that gorge line right there, right on your seam allowance. All right, now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to clip in right to where I started stitching at. Right into there. That's the place where my collar and my lapel are going to meet. They're gonna meet up right in that little corner right there. Now you'll see me clip that down I'm gonna I'll clip down about an inch and a half maybe two inches and then from there I'm just gonna grade my seam allowance all the way down to the bottom now for the moment of truth we're gonna turn out our lapel and you'll see me do my same little magic trick that I showed you earlier with a needle and thread. Now my phone actually <laughs> that you can see there has what is showing on the camera and that's just so that I can see what you guys are seeing. And remember, don't pull on that too hard, but you wanna pull on it enough so that you can get the actual point that you want on your lapel. Now we'll turn out the bottom and then we're going to press, press of course. Now this is the moment where I actually decided that I probably needed to move to my big ironing board. It just made more sense.
and this this is your opportunity right here to get this as crispy and as nice and as pointy and as flat as you possibly need that thing to be now here I'm gonna set my roll line and this is just where I'm going to just create some shape right there in that lapel area I'm gonna make sure that that roll stays rolled actually when I have the blazer on I'm not actually pressing on it I'm actually just applying steam to it and I just put some muslin under there to help me do that there are actually tools that you can purchase to help you with that now when i've done all that i'm actually going to work on my chest area a little bit because from messing with it so much i started to um mess things up there but i'm all done with this side of the blazer and so once i've completed a side or a section i like to hang it up on one of my dress forms just to let it rest i'll hang it up on there you're gonna see me hit it with a little bit of steam and then we'll be on to the next portion of our lives. So you'll see me hang it on there. So thank you guys for watching part one of this video. In part two of this video, we will actually be constructing the entire body of the blazer. And then we will be doing the two most important things and that is adding the collar and the sleeves so thank you so much for watching this video until i see you in my next video be blessed and bye for now